Hi, welcome back. And tonight I'm going to make Arizona burritos. I'm going to be making it out of some beef. Um, I have beef top sirloin steak. And I'm going to cut it up. I'm going to show you that. And you can make the same meal out of ground beef, and that's perfectly fine. But tonight, this is what I have. So I just decided I'm going to do it. And this is kind of a, a go-to um, recipe for me, personally. Um, I make it a lot. The first thing I'm going to do is trim off the big hunks of fat. And I'm going to dice up, make sure I get as much of the fat off as possible because I don't like it with the fat. I'm going to dice this up. This is one of my favorite go-to meals. When I can't figure out what else I'm going to make, I'm like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to do some burritos. So for me, I consider this a quick meal. Maybe other people might not. The, the hardest part about this meal for me is just cutting up the meat. So it's a good idea if you're doing this, make sure you got a good cutting board. Make sure you have a sharp knife. Top sirloin is pretty tender, so I did not have to marinate it or anything. And this particular recipe is just kind of a fast one, so there's no marinating involved. It doesn't take a super long time to cut it all up. So if you have a huge piece of fat, you definitely want to take that off because that's not going to taste good. Trim it up as best as you can. I'm making it in nice bite-sized pieces. I'm trying to cut the pieces similar in size so that they cook a similar rate of speed. I always like to have leftovers, so I'm making two very large steaks, and that way we can eat it for a few days so I don't have to cook every day, and that's a, that's a, a trick. <laughs> Usually make a whole bunch of food, and then we eat off the leftovers for a few days, and I don't have to cook, so. Also, then, if you don't have time, something comes up, then you can have the leftovers, so that's good. This meat is really tender, so cut, I'm cutting through it very quickly. So like I said, this is top sirloin. Now, I have gone to the store before and gotten what they call petite sirloin. I'm not a big fan because it's not very tender, and I thought it was going to be tender, and it isn't. So if you're going to get petite sirloin, I would recommend doing something that, um, you know, maybe marinating it or something like that. Because it was always on sale, so I was buying it all the time, and I found out it was pretty chewy. Now, you can also do the same meal um, if you have venison. And that would be just fine. So it doesn't have to be beef. It's any type of red meat will do. And like I said, you can do this exact same recipe with ground meat. It saves you a step. You don't have to cut it all up. But it's going to taste a little bit different. So. said it's very important to have a sharp knife or you will struggle getting all the meat cut up and then it's actually dangerous because if you have a dull knife it can slip and you can get cut so that's not good and 
then tonight I'm gonna, because I'm in a hurry and this is just what I consider a pretty quick meal, I'm just gonna do a can of beans tonight. I'm gonna do some um, black beans instead of pinto beans, which I do a lot. And I have done, um, if you see on one of my other videos, um, done pinto beans from scratch, which is absolutely delicious. So tonight I just picked up some black beans just for something different. And I didn't have time to do beans from scratch. So you don't always have time to do everything from scratch. But if you take something homemade and then you mix it with something that's canned, then you have a pretty, you have a pretty good meal there. So. Okay, so we're almost done. Here, I'm going to trim the fat off of this piece. Hope everybody's having a good day. The weather started getting cold here. We actually had some a little bit of snow, which was neat, but it didn't stick. So I think uh, since it's the holiday time of year, we were kind of hoping it would stick for a while, but it did not. Okay, so one of the things I have is I have a bowl that I always use when I'm cutting up meat to kind of get an idea of how much I need. And I'll show you that in a sec here. I mean, your size bowl might be different than my size bowl, depending how big your family is. But it's nice to have something that you can kind of measure the amount of meat you have. So when you, you fill it up, you know, hey, I, that's about how much I need for every meal. So that's a good idea to have. So this is my bowl. So that's what I usually try to have about that much meat. And that cooks, uh, that's enough for dinner and some leftovers. And I just noticed when I'm doing that that I have a piece I don't like. So I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to clean the cutting board, clean my knife, get everything all cleaned up, and then I'm going to start with my vegetables. Okay, so next step, I got a different cutting board. Clean my knife with soap and water since I was cutting up meat. And now, and I hope I pronounced this right, at the store I got, these are my favorite type of chilies, Plobamo chilies. Not, not like a regular green chili. It's a little bit different. I'm going to show you all of them because they all look different. Some of them are a lot bigger than this. Like this one's bigger. So you can get that. At most stores but it's called a plabamo chili and I, I hope I pronounced it correctly if I didn't excuse me for that so I'm gonna take this over to the sink and wash these up so you can see the proper way to wash at least the way I do it um, I always feel it's a very good idea to always be making sure that you wash your vegetables properly Show you in a minute how I how I core them and get the um, seeds out and such. So these are the type of chilies. If you go to the restaurant and you buy, uh, you order chili rellenos. Most restaurants, this is the type of chili. So if you go out to eat and you love chili rellenos, you will like this chili when you add it to your burrito. to move the camera quick over here to the cutting board and show you how I do this next. So I take, try not to waste the chili as much as possible, go around in a circle and then I try
tried to get out. As much seeds as possible. I have a bag that I got them in. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this chili over to the sink and just rinse it out a little. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other ones. the insides out. I'm just going to grab as many as I can and I probably should have wore gloves because I have dry hands and it's starting to burn. <laughs> so the chilies, these typically aren't super hot but sometimes they are. So sometimes you never know until you start cooking and it goes into the air. I'm going to rinse this out in the sink. Okay so now I'm going to cut up the chilies. Start by just kind of cutting it in half. Now you can do this however you want. If you want long strips and then cut them in half so that they're um, somewhat bite size, it's fine. But I'm really gonna, because I want the flavor. I made my meat bite size, so I want the chilies to like for every bite for you to be able to get a bite of chili. So I'm going to cut this up pretty small because my meat's pretty small. If you prefer to do strips, you could do it that way, too. So it's just a preference on that part. I'm just going to make it pretty small. And I'm just going to do the same thing with all the rest of these. Okay, so I cut up. There were three chilies, and this is the amount right here. I'm going to put it in a bowl so you can kind of get the idea of how much that's a lot actually but two of them look little to me so I ended up with three sometimes I only put two okay so the next step is red onion and I like a lot of onions and these onions are small so I'm gonna go ahead and put two red onions in okay so you want to get the the end off your red onion and I always rinse my knife in between steps because I've just heard lately about red onions being recalled and all this on the news sometimes and so I'm just super careful with the red onion and so I really rinse between so what you want to do is you want to kind of just take this first layer off so I kind of just went in a little bit with the knife and then I'm just peeling this off. And then I'm going to rinse this red onion, the clean cutting board here. I'm going to cut this in half and then I'm going to get this core out, this part. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to do the same thing to the next onion. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and dice up the, the red onion or the purple onion or whatever. I call it a red onion, but it's actually purple. And I'm going to dice it up. And if you've left your meat in strips and your chilies in strips, you can leave your onions in strips too. But I like to have it in tiny pieces. It also stays, you want to just be consistent. So if you go with long strips, go with long strips with everything. That way it makes it easier for cooking. To me this is better because each bite has a lot of flavor.
Mm. This is a very strong onion, so I'm going to be crying. <laughs> The only problem with that is then you can barely see what you're doing. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get this cleaned up and then we'll go to the next step. Okay. So, to save some time, I'm going to use just some minced garlic. So, I'm just going to put that in with my... And I like a lot of garlic, so I'm going to have a generous amount. I'm going to just put that in there. And then I'm going to go ahead. Sometimes I go ahead and just sprinkle while the um, food is cooking. I'll just sprinkle it with my spices. But I thought it might be easier to show everybody tonight to just go ahead and put the spices in this bowl. And then I'll just put it on the meat later. Okay, so what I want to use is I want to use cilantro, a decent amount. I'm just kind of, I don't really measure out my spices per se. Just kind of, well, that looks about right. And depending on how much meat you have, of course, if you have less, you use less, you'll use less spices. Oh, I just grabbed the wrong one. Okay, that is cilantro. And then I'm going to put in some cumin. I don't want to use too much cumin, it has a really strong flavor. I do want to use a good amount of oregano. Mexican oregano, not Italian oregano. I'm going to put that in there. And then, almost for everything, we use black pepper, onion powder, and garlic. So, we took an empty spice container and we made our own concoction of black uh, black pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. So I'm going to put some of this in there. So this has all the goodies in it already as far as those two items. I'm going to do that. So that's the dry stuff. I'm going to mix this up. So I'm going to sprinkle that on. When I'm cooking, I'll show you when I do it. So I'm going to do that. And then the other thing I like to sometimes do, now sometimes I have orange juice, I do it. Sometimes I do orange juice with pineapple. Sometimes I don't put any juice with the meat. Tonight I'm going to do a little bit of lemonade. And I'm going to do a little bit of lime juice. I don't have limeade. If I had limeade, I would do that. I'm just going to gonna add that at some point, just to give it a little zing. So that's all going to go over to the stove. And then as far as the beans are concerned, I'm just going to do some black beans. So... And canned beans have at least this particular one and most of them, unless you go with low sodium, they already have salt in them. So if you like to put uh, salt in your beans, if you were cooking them from scratch, if you're getting a can of beans, more than likely there's probably already salt in there. So you really don't need to do anything. But I am going to, I think I'm going to add a little bit of my black pepper onion powder garlic mixture to these beans. Because I always, even if it's canned, I like to doctor it up a little. I might even end up adding some cheese to that. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. So I'm going to get this going on the stove. Put it on uh, simmer. Get it warmed up and start cooking the meat. So we're going to go over to the stove next. So one more thing I forgot to show you. So I get um, hatch green chilies that are already flame roasted and diced. So I'm going to put that in there as well. So I'm just going to take up, <laughs> use too big of a spoon so it won't even go in. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to take a generous amount of this too. So 
So that's going to also go into the burritos. Okay, now we're ready to go over to the stove. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of butter into my cast iron skillet. And I'm going to add oil. This would be helpful. It's always a good idea to turn on your stove. <laughs> That'll help things out. Okay, and then I'm going to put some oil down here and let that heat up for a sec. Okay, so now the butter and the sunflower oil, that's the type of oil I put in here, is going. So I'm going to wait till this is going very well, and then I'm going to start in with my vegetables. My un I'm going to start in with my uncooked vegetables. So these chilies are roasted already, so those are actually been cooked already. I just need to heat those up. So it's going. So what I'm going to want to do is put a very good brown on these. There's one I even cut up, so if you have a metal spatula and you miss the spot, you can just break it up. And this, all, this smells good just the way it is. Even people are adding any other ingredients, it smells really good. These onions are super strong. The chilies, I think, might be strong. It's hard, it's hard to tell. But, so we're going to brown these up. Sometimes you don't want to stir it too much, but you don't want it to burn. So you have to really, you really have to, when you're cooking, you really have to listen and look what you're doing. Because you can almost hear it when it's starting to, um, when it's starting to get close to needing to flip it over. And, and of course, keep a close eye on it. starting to have a brown, so that's a step in the right direction. Now, when making this sort of meal, I would highly recommend, if you have a cast iron skillet, to use a cast iron skillet, because it tends to be able to put a brown on your meat and your vegetables better for this type of meal. Gives it that... Uh, really good flavor. In the meantime, I hear these beans over here. They have to stir those. They're like starting to boil. I need to reduce the heat on the beans below. And just let those simmer. looking really good over here. You can see it's really starting to have a nice brown on it. It's almost ready to pulse. Stir it around a little bit more. I'm going to turn the heat off. Keep on letting it cook a little. It's pretty hot. Get 
get this off the heat. I'm going to put it in a clean, separate bowl. gives it a nice flavor. Okay, I'm going to get as much of this out of the pan as possible. Then I'm going to add a little bit of, I'll put that over there. I'm going to add a little bit more butter. And I'm going to add a little bit more sunflower oil. You don't have to use sunflower oil. You can use whatever type of oil you like. I like sunflower oil. But like I said, the butter is the trick to getting a better brown. Now, okay, so it's, oh, I better turn the heat back on, even though it's melting, the heat's not back on. Turn the heat back on. It sounds like it's ready to go. I'm going to put the meat in here. Put it as flat as I can. So I'm going to start browning this meat before I even add the seasoning. Because I don't want the seasoning to burn. So I gotta make sure I get it to a certain point that I'm not gonna worry about that. So I'm doing this on high. Maybe on your stove, it might not be high. It depends. Everybody knows the range top, and it varies. So, you have to kind of adjust it for your particular range top. And sometimes, especially the meat from the store, it seems that they there's like water in there. So, sometimes you have to be patient for it to just kind of cook up. So... When I first threw it in here, it kind of sizzled, and now I'm just going to have to just be patient and have this get to the point where some of this water boils off, and then I can brown it better. So what I'm going to do, I did once a few times before, and it seemed to work, is I'm going to move it all to the side here, and let the... The juice is kind of boil off in here for a few minutes. And then, so it's all like kind of cooling over here. I'll let that boil off a little. That way I don't have to take a, a strainer and under a uh, baster and take it off. Because that's kind of a pain. Sometimes I do do that. But I found that sometimes if I just simply move it all to the side, this will just actually boil off. And then I'll be able to go around and um, and cook the meat without all this worry about all this extra fluid. Okay, so some of the water, most of the water went ahead and boiled off, so now I'm going to be able to brown this. So I'm going to go ahead and add my spices right now. I'm going to mix this around. my green chili that the part the one that was already cooked and I'm gonna 
add my lemonade and my lime juice. Just, actually, I'm going to just brown it a hair more before I do that. I changed my mind. I'm just going to wait 60 seconds. Get it a little bit more. Get all these spices nicely coated. it. Brown it a little bit more. give it a nice flavor and then I'm going to re-add my peppers and onions and garlic and stir this up really well. You don't want to overcook the meat either because then you're going to have tough meat. You want to get it just to the right point. that my biggest piece of meat is done, which I'm sure it is. I'm just going to try to find a piece here. And I'll take this. And it is definitely done. I'm going to mix this up. I'm turning off the heat. I'm just going to mix it up a little more. I want to very well blend it. Okay, so now we're ready to test taste. I was just going to show you the, there's the finished product. Okay, so I like to add a little bit of cheddar cheese. And I like to add some sour cream. the spoon. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, of course, I overwrap this, so I mean, I've overstuffed it. So we're gonna see if I can. All right. Mm. Very good, very tasty. Just the right amount of spices. Mm. My mouth is full now. <laughs> very good. Mm. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was my Arizona burrito. And um, thank you for watching. Thank you for those who are subscribing. And if you're not subscribing, please subscribe and like the video. And I hope you try making an Arizona burrito. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.